In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph logarithmic functions. And so, in order to talk about graphing logarithmic functions, we have to go back and think about the graph of the exponential function because the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. So, if you watched the earlier video about exponential functions and graphing them, there were um, three points that were always on your exponential function. So, here's your general exponential function f of x equal b to the x. And the three points that were always on your exponential function was negative 1, 1 over b, the reciprocal of b, 0, 1, and 1, b. Because, because when I plug in negative 1, I get the inverse of b. When I plug in 0, I get 1. When I plug in 1, I get b. Well, since your logarithmic function, log base b of x, is the inverse of the exponential function, then what you do is you take those points and you switch them because that's what inverse functions do. It takes your domain and range and switches it. So the three points that are always be on your logarithmic function will be 1 over b, negative 1, 1, 0, and b, 1. So keep these three points in mind. Um, these will help you be able to graph a logarithmic function easier. Or you could just plug in numbers for x and get out values for y. So you could do it that way. You can always revert back to doing it that way as well. So let's look at some examples. So for example, when we want to graph uh, y equal to log base 2 of x, and so this function, since logarithmic functions are the inverse of exponential functions, then this will actually be the inverse of y equal to 2 to the x because my base is 2. So just for the record, this is the inverse of y equal to 2 to the x. I also have up here the three points that we just talked about that I always be on the logarithmic function. So my base is 2. So everywhere I have a b, I'll replace it with the 2. So three points I know I'll have on my graph will be 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, and 2, 1. So knowing those three points will be able to help me to be able to um, pick three points on the graph really quickly. So 1 half, negative 1 is going to be here. 0, 1 will be here. And 2, 1 will be here. Now, if I needed more points, three points are sufficient, but sometimes... Uh, your homework program may ask you for five points. So what you could do is just plug in values for x. So pick another value for x, such as four, and plug it in for x and see what you get. So if you plug in four, you get y equal log base two of four. Remember y represents the exponent. So this means I need to raise two to what power to get four? Well, two to the second power is four. So I would get two out. Another number you could plug in is eight. So y equals log base 2 of 8. This means 2 to what power gives me 8? 2 to the third power gives me 8. So this is how I could find additional points if I need to. So I could plot those points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. And then 5, 6, 7, 8, 3 will be here somewhere. And my graph ends up looking like this. And so that would be the sketch of the graph of the logarithmic function y equal log base 2 of x. If we look at the um, domain and range for this function, so here we actually have, so before we had a horizontal asymptote when we were talking about exponential functions, now we're talking about logarithmic functions, we now have a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote. At y at x equal to 0. So uh, for exponential functions, we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that means my graph is going to get really close to the y-axis, but it's not going to touch it. And so that makes my domain 0 to infinity. And then my range, my smallest y is negative infinity. My biggest y is going to be positive infinity. So my range will be negative infinity to infinity. And so this is the graph of y equal log base 2 of x. So for example, two, we want to graph y equal log base 2 of x plus 3 minus 2. So now, this is a logarithmic function that has some transformations. So the same transformations that apply with all the other functions we looked at, they still exist, the logarithmic functions. So adding 3 inside with the x, we'll move the graph to the left 3 units. And then subtracting 2 outside of the x, we'll move the graph down 2 units. So this is the graph of log base 2 of x shifted to the left 3 units and down 2 units. So if I want to graph it, I want to start with y equals log base 2 of x. And so if you recall, we just graphed this in example 1. If you recall the three points on the graph, um, 1 half, 
negative 1, 1, 0, and 2, 1. And then we plugged in some additional ones. We plugged in 4 and we got out 2. And we also plugged in 8 and got out 3. So now for the graph of y equal log base 2 of x plus 3 minus 2, since that shifts the graph to the left three units, that's affecting our x values. So that means we're going to subtract 3 from each x value. And since we're shifting the graph down 2, that affects our y value. So that means we're going to subtract 2 from each of our y values. So we're taking this graph, we're shifting the left 3 by subtracting 3 from each x, and we're shifting it down 2 by subtracting 2 from each y. So if I subtract 3 from 1 half, I will have to find a common denominator. 1 half minus 6 halves. That's going to give me negative 5 halves. If I subtract 3 from 1, that gives me negative 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. And 8 minus 3 is 5. So I've subtracted 3 from each x. Now I'm going to subtract 2 from each y. So I get negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. And so these are the points on my graph where I'm trying to graph log base 2 of x plus 3 minus 2. So I will plot these. So negative 5 halves is negative 2.5. So negative 2.5, negative 3 will be about right here. Negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 1. 1, 0. And 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 will be here. So my graph will look like this. So remember we had a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Well, since we shifted the graph over to the left three units, our vertical asymptote is now here at x equal to negative 3. And so that means our domain for this graph will be negative 3 to infinity. So the graph starts at negative 3. It'll get close to it but never touch it. And then it goes on to infinity. And then the range will be negative infinity to infinity. And that's because our graph goes all the way down and it continues to go up as it goes out. And so this is the graph of y equal log base 2 of x plus 3 minus 2. For example 3, we want to find the domain of f of x equal to the natural log of 2x plus 4. So if you recall how our graph looked for all log functions, it looked like this. And our vertical um, asymptote was at x equals 0. So our domain was always 0 to infinity. So it's important to note that you can only take the log of positive numbers. And that comes from the domain being from 0 to infinity. Now, since we can only take the log of positive numbers, that means what I want this inside to be is positive. So if I want to find the domain of this, I need to figure out what values of x will make the inside of this positive. And not equal to 0, because remember that's an asymptote. It gets really close to that line, but it won't touch it. So I'll take what's inside the log, the argument, and set it greater than 0 and solve for x. So I will subtract 4 from both sides, get 2x is greater than negative 4, then divide both sides by 2, you get x is greater than negative 2. So your domain here will be everything bigger than negative 2, so negative 2 to infinity. That means you can plug in numbers bigger than negative 2 and you'll be able to get a y value out. So this is how you will go about finding the domain of a logarithmic function. And so we talked about in this video how to graph logarithmic functions, how to find the domain of logarithmic functions. And if you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you include them in the comments below. If you don't have any questions, then great job. Then you can go on to watch the next video, which is about properties of logarithms. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.